Welcome back to week four of English 101. This is our reading lecture for this week in which I'm going to talk just a little bit about Edison, New Jersey, part two. So it's an eight page story. I hope you read the first three or four pages last week and can focus on the next three or four pages this week. And when we start essay three, we're going to be talking. Don't worry, I'm not doing this for no reason. We're going to be talking about Edison, New Jersey. And one of the things we're going to talk about, one of the readings we did uh, was related to economic inequality. And I think that there's a lot going on, much like in the Hemingway story that we read, Hills Like White Elephants, where there's a lot going on under the surface. I really love it. Somebody in their paper, I can't believe I've never thought of this. You know, when, when, when ideas are good, they just seem obvious. But somebody mentioned um, the elephant in the room. So probably people have heard that expression before. You know, it's that thing that's so obvious, but we don't talk about it. And somebody mentioned that, Hills Like White Elephants and the Elephant in the Room, which I thought was great. Uh, lots of good things in your papers that I've read so far, and I'm continuing to read those over the weekend, and I'll have those to you by Monday. But just like we read Hills Like White Elephants, and I asked you to write two papers based on that story, uh, we're going to look at another story that has, I think, to do with relationships a lot called Edison, New Jersey. So if you've already started, great. You'll see Junior is the main character. You might not even find his name until it's sort of hard because he's speaking. He's the narrator, but he's also the protagonist or main character. But you'll see as he goes through his job delivering pool tables, um, and card tables and putting them together uh, with his, his partner, Wayne, co-worker. Um, uh, and we'll talk about that today. And also predicting preemies. This is going to tie into our next short story, which will be a few weeks down the road. But um, but still, I'd like you to, to look at this um, reading uh, for this week as well. So let's, let's get into this. Um, remember last week we talked about... Uh, these themes we've done from the first week we've talked about as we're reading these i want you to think about the characters so we've got wayne and junior they're traveling around all through new jersey and new york and putting uh pool tables together delivering them and this story begins with them trying to make his delivery and having trouble um so when and where does the story take place the setting we talked about this again last week but it's probably in the 90s um juno diaz's uh short story collection was published in the late 90s i think in this first one so probably and here's uh new jersey in this county here middlesex county is is where Edison is, so probably somewhere around here. Here's, you know, New York is close by, right, from New Jersey. Um, so in that area somewhere. And again, we talked about the kinds of language that are being used, and so do pay attention to that as you, as you keep going on through. Is it more complicated or simple? Is it how people talk every day, or does it seem poetic or figurative? Is it more concrete, like, you know, describing, like, uh, things that you can see and touch and feel, or is it more abstract, like the thoughts of someone? Some short stories take place, you know, almost completely in someone's head. So how's that working out with the language as you read through this? And again, the point of view, um, I think our story, Junior's telling it first person. He's saying, I did this. I went here. I met Wayne. We went to here. We did this. And so you're going to see these pronouns, I, me. It's not in second or third person. And then some of the themes, I, uh, again, I asked you to read about economic inequality. So you may see um, you know, obviously last week we talked about how there's this comparison between the workers going out and doing the work and then they're taking these pool tables to these people who are, you know, very um, well off um, uh, privileged people. So that's that's a, a contrast there that's coming up and maybe a theme. There's some kind of theme there. There's also themes about work and honesty, all kinds of things that can come up in any story. But in this story, I think you'll see some of those, too. So, again, for the, for the reading summaries, remember, those are not due until May 13th. But for this week, if you can read pages four to eight um, uh, for your reading summary uh, for this week, and there should be questions. I'll double check to make sure they're there. There should be questions that go along with this in the week four uh, uh, course content folder where you have your uh, stuff in Blackboard there. So I'll look for that and make sure that's there before Monday. Here are uh, questions, though, that uh, I think go along with uh, the reading as New Jersey pages uh, and you'll see, and I'm sorry, I missed the page here, but this is on page 860. But let's look at a couple. This was, um, let's see if I can find that. The, narr the narrator mentions that he was a once in college. And I think that's on page 866. So I did mention that right here, but near the bottom of page 866, the narrator mentions the, the idea that he was once in college. And we kind of wonder why is he not now or what's happened. And then at the end of the story, the narrator plays a game uh, trying to guess where the deliveries are going to be the next day. Um, and he says he does it to pass the time. So these are our, take a look at this. You can pause this if you want to. I won't read through all this. but And these are our reading summary questions for week four. Uh, but let's look at what that looks like. 
in the reading those passages here so you get more of an idea and that might help you with uh, understanding the story to use for your essay but also help you with your reading summary for this week too so here's part of that uh that around page 860 on the story and, and let me just read through this really quickly the second time we bring the gold crown this is the big pool table they're delivering right this is around page 860 on page 860 the heavy curtain next to the door swings up like a spanish fan a woman stares at me and wanes too busy knocking to see muñeca i say she's black and unsmiling and then the curtain drops between us a whisper on the glass she had on a t-shirt that said no problem and did look like she owned the place she looked more like the help and couldn't have been older than 20 from the thinness of her face i picture the rest of her skinny we stared at each other for a second at the most not even enough for me to notice the shape of her ears or if her lips were chapped i've fallen in love on less okay so this is the uh the woman you know they finally get into this house they for whatever reason you know remember uh, last week we said the, that seemed like there was somebody in there laughing at them and not letting them you know they felt like they were being prevented intentionally from making this delivery for some reason almost like somebody was just playing with them or something. So then finally they get in and um, he meets this young woman. And for some reason, he begins to remember his ex-girlfriend. And you'll notice if you look at this story, I think we might say Junior is somebody who's carrying a torch, if you've heard that expression before. Um, you know, this idea of you're, you're not able to get over somebody who's, who's been a, a, a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever in the past. His ex-girlfriend, he's kind of carrying the torch, we might say, right? He's, he's not able to get past this. And he's thinking about her. So some reason, meeting this other woman, you may have to look at it and try to figure that out. But I think there's something that, that helps, that causes him to kind of connect and reflect back about his ex-girlfriend when he meets this young woman in the house um, who he's not sure if she's living there or what, what the story is. But he finds out as, as you go through the story what, what's going on with her. And then near the bottom of the page, and again, I think this is on page 866. And actually, it's not maybe the bottom of the page. Um, let me double check. It's actually more near the top. Uh, so here we are. They're, they're in the house. They're working. And the young woman asks Junior if he can give her a ride into New York City. And he's kind of talking to his partner, Wayne. And Wayne says, kid, we have to finish this. And Junior says, I'll be back before you know it. A quick trip in and out. Kid, he stands up slowly. He's nearly twice as old as me. I go to the window and look out. New ginkgos stand in rows beside the driveway. A thousand years ago, when I was still in college, I learned something about them. Living fossils, unchanged since their inception. So for some reason, he's looking out, he's thinking about Wayne, who his, part, his, his uh, you know, co-worker, who's, if you read about Wayne, he's got some pretty, maybe not nice habits about the way he treats women. He's married, he's having affairs and stuff. And, um, you know, you can, you can make judgments or not about that, but it's just... It's what uh, the story shows, and, and you can tell Junior's kind of like, you know, he's not sure. He's still got this thing for his ex-girlfriend, that he meets this other woman, and then he's looking at this tree standing out, and he said years ago when I was in college. So he mentions being in college. He's not that old, but for some reason he's not still in college. It doesn't sound like he finished, um, but, you know, something to think about for question two. The narrator mentions he was in college. Did he graduate? If not, uh, do you think he'll return? Why or why not? So these are just your your um, journal questions or your summary questions for this week. Um, but I think this is kind of interesting here, the idea that ginkgo trees are unchanged. Maybe Wayne is unchanged. Maybe, maybe Junior's wondering if he can change. I don't know. These are just things that I'll, I'll throw out um, uh, because it's literature and it's always an interpretation, I think. Um, usually, here's the last quote, and this is related to this third question. Near the end of the story, the narrator, he's playing a game, so they've got to make deliveries every day, right? And he kind of tries to guess just by looking at the map where their first delivery will be, and it's just the way they, they do to pass time. And so maybe, I don't know if you've ever worked in a job that was boring before, and you, you know, I definitely, I've worked in the factories before, and I worked in, you know, doing uh, farm labor back when I was a kid and stuff, and those, you know, you're in these boring situations, and you have to try to find ways to make the time pass because the work is not that interesting. Um, and so you might have done that before if you've ever been in a job like that. I certainly have. But their game was trying to figure out where they were going to make their first delivery. Usually the name will come to me fast, he says, the way the numbered balls pop out during the lottery drawings. But this time nothing comes. No magic, no nothing. It could be anywhere. I open my eyes and see that Wayne is still waiting. Edison, I say, pressing my thumb down. Edison, 
New Jersey. And, you know, so there's the title of our story. I don't know why that's the title of the story. I'm mean, going to have to think about it, right? Why would that be the title? It's just kind of a random thing. He puts his, you know, thumb down on the map and just picks Edison, New Jersey. Like, this is where we're going to make our delivery, I guess. And um, so I just sort of put it, the title up here, same old, same old, because it seems like this story, a lot of what we're reading is maybe somebody who's stuck in a situation. Maybe they think they can do more or they'd like to do more, but they're not sure. Um, stuck with the um, old feelings about his ex-girlfriend, stuck in a job maybe he sees as a dead end, et cetera, et cetera. So these are, these are uh, related to our uh, reading summary for this week. And again, take a look if you haven't, you know, read the whole story, but if you have read the first three pages, go ahead and read pages four to eight, see if you can answer these questions for your journal. And again, we'll be talking about next week, we'll be starting on our third essay, and that will be related to this story, um, Edison, New Jersey. So we'll come back to this again. And for our um, journals for this week, there's an article called Predicting Premies. You can find that in the week four course uh, folder. And let me know if you have any trouble finding that or the or the Edison, New Jersey reading, either one. And again, remember the journals also are not due until near the end of the semester, May 6th, week 14, right before the end of the semester. Um, but if you start working on it now, of course, it'll be a lot easier uh, when you get to the end of the semester. And that is all I have for you today. Again, I just wanted to kind of introduce um, these last four pages of Edison, New Jersey. Take a look at that and see if you can um, answer the journal questions. And then also, again, begin to think about um, if you understand the story, if you have a good sense of it. So when we start writing essay three, part of it will be kind of summarizing that story and then building your essay based on that. A lot like we did with the story, Hills Like White Elephants. As always, send me an email or reach out and we can get uh, together in office hours and Blackboard Collaborate if you need my help with anything. And if my office hours don't fit with you, send me an email and I can try to find another time. Like if you need to meet in the evenings or something, I can do that from home. So let me know and uh, good luck with this reading and I will see you soon, hopefully.